I went down to just cover the, the protests around the White House. Um, Washington, D.C. was put under a curfew for 7 p.m. I got down there about 6.30 or so, and about quarter to seven, uh, there was several hundred protesters still right around uh, Lafayette Park. Um, all of a sudden, without any warning uh, whatsoever, the police started uh, moving on the crowd and they fired what looked like tear gas. I did see some people uh, pouring water on their eyes. I didn't I didn't smell any of the tear gas myself. And I think the Trump campaign is disputing that, but it looked like tear gas. There's definitely smoke bombs and flashbangs, uh, really loud explosions, fireworks and smoke filling the streets. So I, I had assumed at that point that this was an effort to clear the streets for Washington's 7 p.m. curfew, but it didn't turn out to be the case. Uh, President Trump was giving a speech in the Rose Garden while this was all going on, where he was talking about the need to uh, uh, for mayors and governors around the country to, to crack down on, on some of the, the violence and vandalism and looting that we've seen. Uh, but as it turns out, uh, the effort was to clear the street around Lafayette Park so that Trump could walk to, through Lafayette Park to St. John's Church, the historic Episcopalian uh, church near the White House uh, that, you know, presidents for decades have, have gone to services there. Um, and unfortunately, vandals or arson, arsonists, I guess, had set fire to, to part of that church uh, during the protests on Sunday night, uh, and the president wanted to go take a photo there in front of the church, holding up his Bible, or a Bible, uh, in, in front of the church, which turns out to be the reason why they had been so aggressively uh, clearing the streets. So, you know, I didn't know that when I was <laughs> uh, experiencing that. I, I thought that it was to clear the streets for, for curfew, and I, I found out after the fact that it was in fact uh, uh, so that he could have that photo op uh, in front of the church. So uh, uh, a lot of people are very angry about it. And uh, we've even heard some religious leaders speak out about it today saying that they found out about it, you know, through the media, seeing the, the, uh, the photo op take place. So uh, obviously a, a pretty contra move, controversial move at a pretty uh, tense moment of, of protests nationwide. In our work, uh, in some recent polls that we've conducted and, and other polls that we've seen, people who attend religious services more often, uh, evangelical Christians, tend to think that uh, churches are more, more likely to be an essential um, entity, institution for them um, than other Americans, which is not terribly surprising. But a lot of that, I think, is also symbolic as well. So these folks aren't necessarily in church. Um, but they do, you know, because it is such a critical uh, part of their daily lives um, and a lot of their lives are centered around their religious community, then then that's sort of how I think they're approaching it. I think it's, um, it's certainly a symbolic moment that, you know, Trump standing there, it looked like he was holding the Bible upside down, uh, treating it kind of like a prop. And, you know, I was thinking how much more powerful would it have been if he went out and simply prayed, uh, you know, prayed for the protests uh, to end, the riots to end, um, you know, prayed for no one else to get hurt, um, prayed for, you know, uh, Americans being able to come together uh, and addressing some of the, the hurt uh, that the African-American community and other communities have, have suffered. So I think that would have been an incredibly powerful moment and I think had resonance beyond his 
sort of conservative white Christian base. And that's going to be the problem is that those folks will never leave him. Um, they will stick. They've already stuck with him through, you know, all the travails of, of a, a fairly rocky administration uh, through impeachment, um, through scandal, uh, through a pandemic. And, and so, you know, the problem is that they're only for, for Trump politically is that they're only about 35, 40 percent. Uh, voters. And so where do you cobble together the remaining 10 or so percent to get you, um, or maybe maybe less, he needs less than that nationally because um, of the Electoral College, but he still needs a good chunk of folks who are uh, maybe less comfortable with some of his behavior. And so what a, what a absolute amazing moment that would have been to reach out to sort of um, express some kind of empathy, compassion, um, but I think this president is simply incapable of doing that. Uh, he has demonstrated that repeatedly that his instincts are to attack. And so that is, is kind of an odd combination when you, you try to bring in um, you know, a religious backdrop, uh, a sacred uh, religious text. So I think it becomes kind of awkward for, for those of us seeing it. Um, but I, I think instinctually, you know, he's always thinking about his base and he's thinking about ways um, to, uh, you know, kind of attack his political opponents.